welcome again to my youtube channel if you're new here thank you for joining me i hope the information that i provide will be very useful to you and for those persons that have been here with me on this journey thank you once again for tuning in and watching this video you can stay with me to the end For this video, I want to focus on helping students or prospective students with their student visa application. I want to talk about tips that can help you to possibly not get a refusal, but instead acceptance. So the first thing I'm going to touch on, once again, I did on my first video, but I would like to reiterate. When you are choosing a program to apply for, make sure that the program is being offered by an institution that is a designated learning institution. You will see DLI very often, it is the same thing. So a designated learning institution is approved by the government to host international students. If you don't apply to a designated learning institution, DLI, there is a great chance that you'll get refusal. It is also stated on the government website that they will refuse your application if you're not coming to Canada to a designated learning institution. So make sure that whatever program you see, as a matter of fact, I would suggest that before you even start selecting a program, you go to the designated learning institution list and you basically narrow down to whether you're going to Ontario, if you're going to British Columbia, wherever you're going, you take that list and you work from that list. So you'll be working from the list onwards, not from a program and then to the list, but from the list. That way you make sure from the get go that you are applying to a designated learning institution. So that's my very first tip. And I thought I would reiterate that fact and give you a little bit more details from my first video. My second most important one is making sure that the program you select is aligned to your background, your work experience, and also your educational background. Remember guys, the visa officer is looking at your application without knowing who you are. The visa application speaks for itself. So you want to make sure that your application makes sense. So what I mean by making sure that your program of choice is in alignment with your education and your experience. For example, if you're a nurse in your home country and you have completed a bachelor's degree in nursing, you want to make sure that the program that you're going to is not a diploma in nursing because automatically what that's telling the government is that this is not an educational goal. This is not something that you are looking forward to doing because you want to prove that you have an educational goal in mind, you have a career plan in mind, and you want to advance yourself. But if you have a degree and you're coming to do a diploma in the same area of study, then that's questionable if the visa officer is not looking at you and even if you explain that you want to expand your knowledge, then that's still not good enough because it's still nursing and it is a step down from what you completed in four years. And especially if you're doing a one year program, there's no way doing a one year will help you if you already completed four years. So, make sure let's say for example again if you'd like to be a doctor but you have completed accounting business management all of those things and you've been working as an administrator yes you can be looking to change your profession but that's where a letter explaining your interests will come into play so if you are looking to change career you have to submit a letter 
in addition to your application and i'll talk about that in another video to explain that uh, in full details but for now you need to make sure that even if you have experience and you'd like to enhance your skills you want to take up either a postgraduate diploma which is a step up not necessarily in the same thing but something a specialized field in nursing in addition to that you can also do a graduate certificate at least that's a step up from let's say you did nursing and you would like to specialize in midwifery or uh, something of that sort, but a specialized area, then that's different. For example, uh, my friends and I from the previous video, I did chemical engineering, one of my friends did pharmaceuticals and the other friend, she did business management. We all came and we did a graduate certificate in project management because a project a graduate certificate is a step up but project management complements all of our degrees in its own way so you can do something and i suggest that you do something that complements what you already have and if you're switching career paths you're making sure you have a letter explaining that switch so that's my tip number two, which I think is one of the most important things for your application. Because once again, you're not sitting in front of the visa officer, you are submitting your application and it needs to speak for itself. Another thing is financial support. I will talk about financial support in another video, but before you even go ahead and apply for the school, you don't want to be doing this application process more than once. You need to make sure that you have the required funds. You need to make sure that the persons that are willing to sponsor you to study in Canada will in fact be able to give you enough money to prove to the visa officer that you can afford to study in Canada. So you take your tuition into consideration and then that extra $10,000 to make up that money that you need. This money can come from your family members and your relatives or close friends, depending on the type of relationship that you have. And they need to attach a letter, which I'll explain in another video to say that they are giving you this money to use. It's not a loan. They're giving you this money to use. So you need to make sure before you even go ahead and apply that you have the required funds. So you calculate what the tuition is and then you add that $10,000 to the amount just to make sure that the statements that you can get or the money that you have will prove that you will be able to sustain yourself. Those are not all the things that will help you to avoid visa refusal but i believe those are the three top things that will automatically have you get your visa refused except for those that um, unfortunately have a criminal record so those are the three top things that i would definitely suggest that you look into before you even go ahead and apply for a program of study and before you even get to the student visa application portion. I hope this was very helpful for you. I can provide you with a list below basically indicating the other areas that you need to focus on to make sure that you don't get your visa refused. So once again, thank you for joining me. Remember to like, share, subscribe, um, and comment below if you have any feedback for me. I am open to feedback, I'm open to questions. And of course, I make these videos so that I can help to provide more information and to help this process be a very, very much easier one for many. So stay with me on this journey. I hope this was very informative. Thank you.